Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vince Stone, joined every week by one Hello. Joe Bryan, everybody watching this live on Twitch. A lot of stuff to talk about this week. Yeah. A lot of things went mm -hmm. on. Most of it's kind of like, uh, I, I don't know about that, but there's some really neat things in the work. But Jill, you want a map on Friday. What am I talking about? We do Trackmania. <laughs> It's kind of like 30s and over. I know we got some late 20s in there. Not intentionally. Anyone's <laughs> welcome to join in. It's the old people's club over here. You're like, oh, see if we can get our cars around the tracks. <laughs> but you bested everyone in a points match. Yeah, I did. This is, I think, the third time I did it on Friday. I've done it before in practice, but this was the third time on Friday. So for me, that's a victory to win a map and, and get the most points. <laughs> We got to think about how far everyone's come because we were cycling yeah. through maps on Tuesdays. We load in some new maps every week and go through them, kind of get a feel for them because we practice them during the week until we come into Friday where we have that points match and, you know, we have game giveaways and all that. But there was a map from the past because the server I've set up, you know, keeps track of all that. So I was like, I don't know if I played this, but you got to remember like back in the day, a lot of people couldn't make it around the tracks and that's yeah. just not a problem anymore. Yeah, now I don't have any problem with wall rides and multiple loops and the more... Oh, I know uh, when you hit a loop, Jill. Yeah, <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at loops, it's but like, occasionally like, if I go... Like that, like loop. <laughs> well, if, if it's one that has multiple loops and you have to go <laughs> it's what I did really twice. fast, I have to memorize it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jill likes the loops and... Um, <laughs> No, I'm glad everybody comes and hangs out and plays, or even if you just watch. That it, it's uh, it's just fun, and yeah, sure it's nice is. and silly, and it's competitive but friendly. Mm -hmm. And we definitely have a uh, established like, you know, racing classes. You know, like Formula One through Formula Thirteen. Everyone's yeah. got their own nemesis. Yes, yes, we all do. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit. I'm cautiously optimistic. Excited is a strong word. Because I'm possibly have something very cool showing up Thursday or Friday. It says Friday. It might mm -hmm. be Thursday, as long as I don't end up getting mailed a like brick. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be happy. <laughs> it turns on. <laughs> Man, um, I'll show that in Discord once it shows up. If it shows up and everything's golden and I don't have to go through anything. But in other news, the uh, Behringer UV one. We're back to working on that. Uh, I'm going to be playing with a recompiled kernel USB audio quirks build tonight in here since I'm here to get everything on. Hopefully, in the next at least week or so, we'll get everything needed to make that device work under Linux because it's also a really cool piece of kit that I think is something if you're into streaming or recording a podcast mm -hmm. and you don't want to have all this you know crap that I got set up going on. It's something that you can just use out of the box. You just plug it in and go, especially for live streaming. So I, I want to get all that hammered out and get everything working and get that moved into the kernel and Linus can go, okay, that's fine. And it'll just work eventually nice. one day. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. But let's get into a little bit of the news. And this one, this is more of an opinion piece, if you ask me. <laughs> Software Freedom Conservancy. Give up, GitHub Jill. The time has come. Yeah. It's mean. It's bad. Grr, I don't like squid cats. <laughs> oh, I like squid kitty. <laughs> uh, this one goes on and on and on. No, <laughs> e each to their own. You know, for me, GitHub, probably the best social network I know of. You know, RIP G+. But that said, um, you know, this article is uh, it's an opinion piece. And I get it. But uh, this kind of comes down with all the concerns with Copilot, which I agree with all of them, 100%. I've not had anything. I should say I've not heard anything really defending Copilot. Like, that's a problem yeah. waiting to happen. But you know what? The Copilot saga hasn't played out yet. Because how many of you at home remember SourceForge and watching that implode? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Things will happen, even when Microsoft in charge. You know, Microsoft's been known to mess up things before. Agreed. But this article, 
and then it just comes across as an opinion piece and kind of a hot mess. And, you know, it does have recommendations like, hey, move over to GitLab. And, you know, even with GitLab, the, you know, it has a licensed floss version and a proprietary version. Yeah. Um, and, Community edition. Yeah. And if you're using yeah. GitLab's website, you're using the proprietary version. Uh, uh, but the thing that wasn't addressed is some of the problems involved in moving from like GitHub to something else. If you remember moving from SourceForge to GitHub back in the day and a comment from Hacker News kind of stuck out to me. You know, Copilot mm -hmm. has issues. GitHub is going the way of SourceForge. You got to abandon GitHub. Okay. So in order to do that, you need to migrate the bug queue, have all links and commit history break. Application integration with GitHub or bug reporting, that's gone. Update all your documentation, find a new web host, and find a new CI CD. You know, already burned by Travis, GitHub workflows are nice, and teach. Mm -hmm. This is the big one, our user contributors, to actually use it. Lose all PR history, migrate project tracking, find a new place to host. Uh, it goes on, and none of those are unreasonable concerns no are they no no i i definitely uh you know i understand people are nervous about the microsoft's ai that is uh oh i should point out jill yeah um i'm vince stone i'm internet you know me i'm a staunch <laughs> microsoft defender by the way yeah 100 percent all the time yeah, long track record ben, of sticking up for the, microsoft ben is the, sticking up for them but <laughs> You know, Microsoft is doing doing what Microsoft uh, does, and they're you know it's their best interests. And this this is actually really interesting because the Software Freedom Conservancy, uh, they you know had this article, and it honestly has been creating waves of awareness in the FOSS community about GitHub. You know, in, in their opinion, dwindling away the rights of open source projects, and. I understand that. You remember, Ven, the mass migration from uh, GitHub to GitLab when we found out that Microsoft was going to be taking over? <laughs> I don't know, a couple, of couple of projects like panic migrate. Yeah, they but did. And now I honest, do want to point out, Yeah. after all that shaken down, pretty much everything I still use is on GitHub, and I have no love for GitHub. I use GitLab as well. I'm yeah. Not same knocking part. that and arthur and, and chad pointed out yes we should mention git t as yeah, well yeah git t is one of the best in fact i was gonna mention that one and then there's also uh, source hut and codeberg those are also good alternatives i don't know um i mean to hmm. me yeah i'll use whatever i have to use you yeah know? like i still have to interact at least every other week with a mantis. So you could pour one out for old man Ben. That's still <laughs> yeah. a reality. Um, <laughs> I'll use whatever. There's a lot to be said of like, I know how to use GitHub and I like, I genuinely like the web interface of GitHub. Yeah. But yeah, the whole thing of, um, you know, copilot imploding, 100% a possibility. Have contingency mm -hmm. plans, I think, is the best strat right there because I don't like what copilot's doing with just straight up wholesale taking code, licensed yeah. code, and shoving it and suggesting it out. Now, uh, uh -huh. Make up your mind. Write in. Tell tell me why uh, I'm right or wrong or why Jill's right or wrong about anything. And just like, we'd love to hear that. Yeah. Well, you know, on, uh, honestly, at the end of the day, I think Microsoft has really been actually a good, good steward of GitHub. Yeah, I don't like all their policies and, and some of the things they've done, but overall, they've kind of kept it you know like it was before they uh took over so i'm happy about that but if you would like to move the software freedom conservancy uh, launched a website giveupgithub.org where they provide tips ideas methods uh tools and support and options to those that wish to leave github mm -hmm. so it was a pretty good article and yeah, I mean, you can do self hosting and yeah. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really feel qualified to really comment on that too much, other than I think Microsoft hits differently for those who were alive and well and of age 
of dealing with Microsoft in the 90s. Yeah, definitely. That was a different creature, and we know yes. parts of that creature's DNA still exist in Microsoft in the 2020s. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> oh, every time Microsoft does something good, I'm like, hmm, you got to do something With bad now to balance it out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, eh. <laughs> oh, who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I do know that you can now use extensions with the GNOME 1 browser. Also, GNOME has a web browser. Yes. So, yeah, no, GNOME Web, also known as Epiphany, is actually one of my favorite web browsers and one that many, I think, many Linux users overlook. It, it is finally adding support for web extensions, which is something I have been wanting, uh, wanting for quite some time. And honestly, now that it has web extensions, I'm going to be using this browser even more than I was. And, uh, you know, now you'll be able to use your favorite add-ons and extensions with, with uh, this very nimble and powerful, yet very minimal web browser. And this will help it compete with the likes of Mozilla Firefox and Google's Chrome web browsers for Linux users. And um, what's cool is that the GNOME web extensions is actually part of the GNOME 43 feature set and is modeled after Firefox, Fox's manifest version 2.API, which includes compatibility with Chrome extensions when possible. So now you have the best of both worlds in an independent browser. And it's just so wonderful. One of the things, Ben, I like, I love so much about this browser is on its surface, it does, it looks very minimal. In fact, there are two different settings menus. And so on the forward facing for the average user, there's just, it's, it's a really minimal interface and there's a, a small set of settings. And then when you dig deeper, there's a full set of settings like you get in Firefox and Chrome. So it's, it's, it's very powerful. And now that it has extensions, is is equal <laughs> to Firefox. Well, and, I just uh, have to Chrome. assume like GNOME's not done with it because they need to remove the powerful features. Then they can really say hey, it's a GNOME yeah. product. <laughs> well, I think so many of us in the Linux community you know, just, just kind of looked at it as a as a, a quick way to read documents online or blogs, and um, that's what that was its history. But it has really um, come along, and it even has Firefox Sync. Um, Firefox Sync is nice. Being able to, yeah. like, you know, head over to the Firefox store and install everything. I'm not alone. When I first read this, my first thought was, like, huh. Right. I, I think I knew that, you know, there was some type of built-in browser with a GNOME. But yeah. there was also, like, right. Oh, I, hmm. GNOME has a browser. Of course they do. Everybody has one. And you know, we need something different you know this mm -hmm. is using apple's webkit rendering engine or kde webkit i don't know i'm not gonna get that fight we went <laughs> on that history lesson you know 2005 man uh you know so we don't live in that chromium future because we've already gotten a taste yeah. bringing up the microsoft thing of like one engine controlling the web and where you end up with things like activex and vv script we don't need that again so yeah having another option outside of firefox and chromium Absolutely. And having plugins can absolutely make this a viable thing. As long as everything renders correctly. Yeah. So it's it's not yet ready for a stable. It's in the Epiphany 43 alpha version. Mm -hmm. And yes, what's interesting, they still call the project Epiphany, but on the <laughs> on the desktop they call it GNOME Web, even though it's yeah, <laughs> a little confusing. <laughs> well that's I think it. they should like, just call it Epiphany again. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> of a certain age, because yeah. I saw GNOME Web, I'm like, I never heard of that. Epiphany? Oh, right. Yeah, I yeah. knew that existed. Oh, right. I knew yeah. that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it's there. I'm glad it's kicking around. Yeah. You, know, you say what you would want about GNOME, and this is a great thing. You know, GNOME, a lot of good tools have come out of the GNOME project, mm -hmm. whether Absolutely. or not you like the desktop manager. So keep that in mind. Now, this got a lot of hubbub yeah. on the internet. <laughs> and GNOME, uh, let's consider just dropping like X11 back in mm -mm. and GTK5. <laughs> oh boy. Who needs X? You know, no. this is going to happen. There, 
you might have guessed a little bit of disagreement. Like, no, maybe we should keep the X11 back in for GTK5 and it'd be a thing. And then the internet, you know, people showed up to express their opinions and in traditional gnome fashion they just locked the thread you know because hey people found out about this and would like to share their thoughts and opinion nope we need to lock that can't have user feedback um mm. don't panic even if gtk5 yeah. gtk5 your widget said to under explain it and um even if that's Wayland only that's probably going to be just fine because gtk5 is a long way out like yeah. two weeks from now, you don't have to, I'm joking, but. <laughs> yeah, even Katana in chat, chat said it might be five years out. And I think you're right, Katana. <laughs> That's underselling it. GTK3 <laughs> yeah. was released in 2011. Okay. Yeah. It's been that long. It's been that long. It seems like GTK3 is the new thing. And if you're on the XFCE team, you're like, yes, it's brand new. <laughs> it came out in 2011. <laughs> GTK4 didn't come out until 2020. So two years ago. Mm -hmm. that's a gap so yeah and let's be honest you know the only thing i even think about with uh, gtk supports xfce and if gt if xfce is on gtk4 by 2031 i'll be a little surprised <laughs> yeah but I, I think it's a a, a a 10 year release cycle <laughs> 10 or 11 years you know? yeah <laughs> and as the internet has told me wayland's only 10 years away so it's going to line up just right don't worry yeah. about it. It'll be <laughs> fine. No worries. Yeah, don't don't panic about that, people. If anybody tried to wind you up about that, just like, no, 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 don't don't worry about it. And you know what? If I was wrong 10 years from now, send me an email. And I'll be yeah. to apologize. <laughs> now, we are going to end up talking a lot more about Waylon because, well, I didn't predict it at all. But when NVIDIA finally said, all right, fine. With yeah. like, like balls rolling now, everyone balls rolling. It's get, time. Yeah, it's going to happen. Like, yeah, <laughs> just get ready for it. It might not be tomorrow, but one of the things that was holding us back, Joe, yeah. is uh, compatibility, right? Yeah. So I'm very excited for this, and I, I, it's come a little sooner, honestly, than I thought. But I'm very happy. So yeah, so running a complete, complete desktop environments within X Wayland is actually now possible thanks to some patches merged to the master code. This will allow Linux distros to drop the Xorg server, but still ship X11 only desktops like XFCE and Mate. Mate actually has Wayland support now, X Wayland as well. But anyway, so uh, XFCE is a good example. And I was so excited when I first read read this tweet and was hoping, you know, it would happen really soon. And it did, honestly, a little sooner than I thought. So now then I can run all my favorite X window managers in Wayland, including Window Maker, which I'm using right now, Enlightenment, Flexbox, Afterstep, Ice, Window Manager, and XFCE. Woohoo, which I know you're happy about. <laughs> yeah, like one of those is a real window manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ben likes Rodentia OS. <laughs> I like stable. Rodentia desktop. <laughs> yeah, so what what is actually amazing to a achieve this functionality, there were several new merge requests to X Wayland, including a new command line option, tack full screen to run X Wayland rootful full screen. That's that's the key there, rootful. In full screen, coupled with uh, TAC geometry and TAC host grab. This allows to run a full X11 desktop in X Wayland on a dedicated monitor with X Rander modes emulated, including resolutions higher than the actual output resolutions. It's pretty neat. Very good. It's pretty fascinating. And, you know, <laughs> Jordan, if you're watching, baby, I'm cribbing your notes <laughs> from uh, Saturday because. You pretty much laid it out. You know, a lot of this does have to do mm -hmm. with improving X Wayland's ability to run in rootful mode. So, yeah. you know, you're talking about faking device cursor grabs and all that desktop integration, arbitrary resolutions, uh, fixed geometries, host grab support, mm -hmm. and the ability for the capacitor to kill the main Wayland window in rootful mode. Now, 
will this be good for distributions? 100%. 100% because yeah. that Whalen ball is rolling. And this is yet one more thing that you can't say, well, this could hold us back because we couldn't ship XFC or whatever. It's going to break X, Y, Z. It won't now. And um really glad to see that. Mm-hmm. Really glad to see that. I had, to, I had to look around, though. I was like, enlightenment. I always wanted to run enlightenment. Like, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love E17s. There's part so of me, I'm like, it's so neat. It's so 90s. It's like <laughs> vaguely <laughs> yes. modernized 90s desktop. And it's still got its own look. Nothing looks like enlightenment. It yeah. It just doesn't. Beautiful. And um, it's not stable. It's not. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. Um, you can pretend it is. I can prove to you it's not. I can show you how to crash <laughs> it. Production, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but Wayland Support for Enlightenment is underway. I went and looked that up this morning. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, they're working on it. Like, there's test builds. Like, like, all right, okay, we can get this moving around. Um, as Jill brought up, you know, Mate has had Wayland Support as of 1.26, so like mm-hmm. last year, 2021. And I went looking at the XFC Wayland roadmap. They're still very much in the, um, sort of kind of pretending Wayland doesn't exist slash brainstorming phase yeah. of development. And I think that roadmap hasn't been updated in two years. Uh, correct me if I'm right, but I worry about projects and I can just speak to XFC because I could see them going, why even bother if it's just going to run in rootful mode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, unfortunately it's like a lot of the game developers who are not going to make a Linux port. Well, it runs on Proton. Why do I need to? To get a valid point. Yeah, and yeah. much like Proton, <laughs> like your core users, I'm going to say like X of C, are going to be people, people like me. I got a studio to run. I got boxes. I don't need the whizzes. I don't need the bangs. What I need is quick, light footprint, stable, never crash. How often does yeah. it? Never. Like I want to invite people over and take a screenshot if I see an error yeah. in XFC. Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very, a lot of confidence in that code base. Mm-hmm. How is that going to translate? When it's running in rootful mode under Wayland, because you know what? That's Eventually, I'm going to move everything over to Wayland and it's going to be integrated with Pipewire. And you know what? I don't want a proton layer if I can get away with it. You get what I'm saying? And yeah, I understand absolutely. bad analogy, but for the sake of argument, I'm going to use it a works. proton layer. I'm going to find something that is built for Wayland. I'm going to find a window manager that does everything I need. And I think that unfortunately would happen. It has mm-hmm. a high probability of happening. And yeah. I want to be wrong. I don't like that. I don't like <laughs> I that future, Jill. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Mm. <sighs> Enlightenment. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> One day. All right. That's enough of that. Where are we at? 23 minutes? We got a couple of minutes to spare. I would have spare a couple of those minutes telling you about LinuxGameCast.com. Go ahead over to our web zone. There's a link to our Patreon. If you want to support us, patreon.com forward slash LinuxGameCast. Got a bunch of bonus sodas for you. If you can kick us four quarters a week, we'd really appreciate it. You get a live uncut version of this show, all the extra bits left in. If you're just like, hey, we try to keep this one like 30 minutes, but it's normally about an hour and a half long. In and out, you need a little Linux content, extra custom RSS feed. It's going to be part of your patron subscription access to our Discord. You can also get that if you are a Twitch subscriber. If you That's a litmus test. If you want to come hang out in our Discord, you got to figure out how to link that. Google it. But I have faith in you because you're smart. You're listening to this show. That also lets you mm-hmm. come play Trek Mania with us, if that's your yeah. jam, or any other. You know, we're very community oriented. We're like things. If we're going to be doing multiplayer, that's where we go. We're like, hey, who wants to come play with us? Because we like bringing the community in that way. And we got other perks and uh, things along those lines. Or if you can just share the show, tell people about. It. Tell your cat about weekly, daily Wednesdays. I'm sure it would be very excited. It might even Aww. yell back at you. Yeah, my kitty Frodo has uh, watched me during LWW. <laughs> what be this insanity? Yeah. It's us. Yeah. It is us. We also get a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. A bunch of other things. We have a YouTube channel. Some people watch us on YouTube. We have a, we're on library. I know the Odyssey yeah. thing shows up. That's like synced. Odyssey. <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, Spotify, you can leave us a message. Somebody prove that that does, oh, in fact, yeah. work. We played a voicemail on Saturday's uh, Linux Game Guest Weekly, and that voicemail was like, Vin, you need to shut up and quit telling people it's simple as clicking a button. So <laughs> yeah, because it isn't. <laughs> phase one is click button, and after that, at somewhere 
you know, you bake in the Narwhal at the end of yeah. that. All right, Joe, you get to uh, give a little yeah. bit of thanks, though. Yeah. So Gametron from chat actually gifted me a pink, beautiful pink Cadillac model to use as my car in Trackmania 2 Stadium. Thank you so much, Gametron. I've used it for the last two uh, streams we've done, and I love it, actually. It, it, the car is easy for me to see, <laughs> so <laughs> that's it really helped, honestly. It is, it's quite large and shouty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I love it. <laughs> that is that is nice. Uh, I threatened to give Ogie. Um, I was like, you know what? I have a Hello Kitty very. I have a Hello Kitty car, by the way. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> it's in, it's incentive. You don't want to get beat by the Hello Kitty car. Yeah. <laughs> or you're not going to tell anybody publicly about it. Uh, all right. Slice pie, two stories, cheap pies and risky pies. Best I could do was trust me, I'm an engineer. Oh, cake. that was a wonderful find. The picture of a, a, a someone did a cake with a circuit board uh, pattern on the top, and it says, trust me, oh, I'm man. an engineer. <laughs> That's awesome. There's almost enough capacitors on there for me to call it like an audiophile pro sound card. Yeah, <clears> really. <throat> and they're nice big capacitors, too. I know, because audiophiles think, yeah, exactly. It's big, it's high quality. I'm like, you don't, that's not how it, it works. Depends on the manufacturer. No, <laughs> no. You, you don't, like, the last, if you see a card with a bunch of, it's like having tubes stick out of something, that is made yeah. the lowest common denominator. I'm like, that is not how <laughs> things are done in modern engineering. But hey, you know what, it sells things. See, John's like, but it's big, and it's a good manufacturer. That It's like, oh, okay. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm not saying it's optimal. But what is optimal? Six dollars mm-hmm. for a raspberry pie, Joe Bryant. Yeah, it sure is. Pico yeah. W, your six dollar mm-hmm. IoT platform. No, you're not going to run Quake Three on it. I look forward to somebody trying to prove me wrong on that, but I think I'm safe because this little critter is packing a uh, ARM Cortex M0, 133 megahertz, 264k of on-chip SRAM. It's kind of neat. Uh, you can get the Pico H. That's no Wi-Fi for um, like five. Pico WH is really going to be like seven. The uh, WH is not going to come out until August. And you got to keep in mind what this is. This is like an Arduino uh, replacement yeah. type, you know, IoT, right? Industrial embedded. Yeah. I think Pedro made a point. He's like the package for the Wi-Fi module is larger than the um, SOC. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, actually, the price points are wonderful. I mean, the original was uh, $4. Uh, the original Pico launched in a um, in the world of actually hardware shortages in January of 2021. With, and it's had almost 2 million boards sold. Woohoo! And so now we have three Picos. And Raspberry Pi, I mean, you show me this nice, um, you know, the mm-hmm. 2040, but you don't list the flavor profile. What's it taste like? <laughs> yeah <laughs> does that have like uh, hints of silicon and uh may, may, maybe a little bit of capacitor it might taste toasty like you've baked some toast oh no you don't want it to taste like that <laughs> yeah you don't want it you want don't want it to overheat that's for sure yeah you, you, yeah, you don't want to overcook it i mean so maybe you need to put a heat sink and fan on it maybe we could pretend it's an nvme did you see that in discord yesterday joe oh yeah absolutely i, I sure did yeah they were talking yeah, you about can, PCI 6 yeah. having requiring like legit active cooling. Yeah. And I saw the picture in the article. I'm like, oh, look, they made a funny haha. Somebody had put a uh, like heat pipe uh, radial fan. Goodbye, everyone. Um, oh, I guess Ben's camera died. But that happens. <laughs> either that or it got unplugged or something. Just pretend yeah. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. But they built an active cooling heat sink on the NVMe. And I thought that was a joke until I looked it up and it was a real product. Yeah, it's a real product you can buy. Yeah, I've seen them for sale. <laughs> and that's a thing. Yeah, uh, $6 pies. I don't know about that. I'm kind of more interested in the Pine 64, though. Me wouldn't meaning to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, Speedy Pine. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm, I'm dubbing Speedy Pine. So Pine 64 has announced it is working on a Risk Five single board computer. Woohoo! We don't have detailed specs yet about the hardware, but we do know it, the Risk Five board will be available with four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM. Features 
support for USB 3.0, gigabit Ethernet, and a PCI slot, IE slot. Yes, a PCIe slot. So you can get that external GPU on it <laughs> really easily. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really exciting news. I know Ven was really interested in uh, picking this one up when it comes out. Pine 64 is always just pushing the envelope of things. And, uh, you know, they've, they've had experience with RISC-V before with their Pine Sills uh, smart sol soldering iron, which Pedro has. And um, there's a RISC-V chip on the Pinecone Internet of Things d development board as well. So they are, are very experienced using RISC-V. And so this, this makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, what I think about Pine, what I, we talked about last week, you know, having a Pine phone. Pine release, releases a lot of Tinker devices. That, that's their bread and butter. And that's really yeah. what it is. Anybody tinkering with RISC-V, RISC-V right now, is the ecosystem. So virtually non-existent, but that's why you're there. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. You want to play around with it. And yeah, this is yeah. not going to be terribly powerful, but it depends on what it ends up. You know, yeah. we all want to play with it, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be, we want, we want those risk five computers. That's for sure. I just want to do this. <laughs> I want to get like a full tower. Oh uh, yes. There you go. <laughs> Put a little, <laughs> a little, uh, uh, pine risk five. Hmm. I wonder what the name of it should be. Uh, uh, we got the pine tab and the pine phone and <laughs> pine time, right. uh, risky pine. <laughs> um, I called it speedy pine, but I don't know. I'd call it pine for vendetta. Pine yeah. Day. There you go. Edgy pine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Risky pine. However you yeah. want to roll with it. I want one long as it's reasonable. All it has to do is be in stock and I'll buy one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've been in the market for like two months to buy another uh, Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gig. Yeah. Because I had a project. Yeah. <laughs> I've been wanting and, one too. <laughs> yeah. The 200, 280 bucks to get a Raspberry. Like, that's just not going to happen. Like, I, it hurts me enough to pay 70 to $90 for one. Though. Yeah. Ah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Ooh. And that's from Lily Plot. Lily. Like, Putin, Lily P Putin, Putin, yeah. Dot com. All that's going to be in our show notes after the fact. Everyone, like a Lily Putin, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just as delicious. A little bit yes. of garlic salt, <laughs> mm, bite size too, nice and crunchy. Little Putins. <laughs> all right, everyone, we got to roll out of here. We're a little bit over mm. our time, but thanks for hanging out with us. We're going to roll some credits and uh, say goodbye. If I got the music lined up, okay. There Hopefully, it is. there it is. Great credits. Yay, got it. Yay, thank you to all our wonderful patrons. We have, right now, we have Katana in chat. We have Mir. We have Inertia. We have my Steve husband. We have FX Boy Forever. We have Artharin, otherwise known as now, Gandalf in all the fairness, Creed. Steve is in Discord under the um, beleaguered spouse accord. No. <laughs> yeah. We've been over this. Steve underscore husband. <laughs> oh, but we do thank, you. thank all Ooh, of you. Look at that overlay. <laughs> all our producers, our executive producers, our sea monsters, which uh, uh, System T is part of now. <laughs> our, all right, our beautiful people. Death notes. We're going to bounce out of here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Again, we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye. Love you all. Let's get stay on. Mm-hmm. <laughs>